what we're going to look at right now is the reduction of an amide to an amine with lithium aluminum hydride. So you can use a variety of different amides. I know in this chapter I have an aromatic one. Um, it doesn't matter if it's aromatic or not. And so just to be different from those that I have in the notes, I'm going to use a non-aromatic one just to make sure you're aware. It doesn't need to be an aromatic amide. It can be any amide. And it can be primary or secondary. Doesn't really matter. Tertiary amide. The point is, it doesn't matter if there's two hydrogens, a hydrogen and a carbon group, or two carbon groups on that nitrogen. That's unimportant. What you are going to find on the arrow, though, are set of conditions. Sorry, so you're going to use lithium, aluminum hydride, and I hope you remember the hydride is a very strong base, so you, we use a solvent like diethyl ether that does not have any acidic protons available to it. And after all is said and done, you usually do use an acid workup to neutralize any leftover base. I probably won't show that, but that's the whole purpose of it, is to neutralize any bases that are left over at the end of the day. Now, lithium is a spectator ion, so I'm just going to draw it over to the side. It's here the whole time. It just does nothing. And then you've got your aluminum hydride. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about why it's a hydride source. I do that in some other reduction videos. But the aluminum is less electronegative than the hydrogen, so when the aluminum-hydrogen bond breaks, the hydrogen takes the pair of electrons, forming a hydride. And hydride's a very good base, and it will use this pair of electrons to form a bond to the carbonyl carbon. Now, carbon can't have five bonds, so you break the pi bond between carbon and oxygen, and as that is occurring, this pair of electrons, you can show it this way, there's a couple of ways you can show it, the oxygen will form a bond to the aluminum, or you can show it in a slightly different way if you don't like doing it that way. You can show the electrons um, in the double bond actually forming the bond to the aluminum since it's electrons that are coming from the oxygen. So either of those two ways is perfectly fine when you decide to do this. So what do you get? You get a tetrahedral intermediate. Okay, so this is the intermediate that you get. Now the neat thing about the amide is this nitrogen. This nitrogen can use its lone pair of electrons to make a carbon-nitrogen double bond. And as that happens, this carbon-oxygen bond can break and depart. Now the species that I've drawn here over on the left has resonance stabilization of the positive charge, though that is the major contributor to the resonance, that one there on the top. But there is another resonance structure. And that's part of the reason why back here that nitrogen was able to come in and make it the double bond as there is some stabilization of that positive charge through resonance. So 
That's why we could kick out the oxygen. If oxygen had done that, there would have been no stabilization of positive charge. There wasn't any there. So th this was favorable chemistry. Now, we don't have a carbonyl carbon in the sense that we have a carbon-oxygen double bond, but we have a pseudo-carbonyl carbon since it does have a pi bond to an electronegative atom, and it is susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So this um, aluminum complex that you see over there still has more hydride available, and another hydride will break off to alleviate some of its negative charge since there's two negative charges over there. So the hydride will come over, the hydrogen and its electrons, and add to the pseudo-carbonyl carbon. As that does so, you can break the pi bond between carbon and nitrogen. If you want, you can show this on the other resonance structure and just have it adding directly to the carbonyl carbon. But the resonance structure on the top is the predominant resonance structure, so you're more likely to show it from that one. There is still lithium hanging around to balance that charge out here. But the point is, at the end of the day, we were able to take the amide and convert it to an amine. And that can be very useful to you. So you can do this with aryl amines, sorry, aryl amides, or alkyl amides, and get either type of aryl amine or alkyl amine, depending on what you had on the other side of um, the carbonyl group. But you're always going to get a CH2 group right next door to that nitrogen.